This episode is brought to you by Dice Dungeons. Dice Dungeons has character coins in stock. Use reversible coins to represent your characters or monsters in Dungeons and Dragons. They have character class coins and various monster coins, including beasts, humanoids, zombies, and spiders. They even have three inch dragon coins to impress your D&D group who get impressed by large coins. And if that's not enough, they have four inch purple worm coin tokens, and it's exactly what you need. These are perfect for a dungeon master on the go. Pick up a cloth battle map and some coin tokens and boom, you've got D&D while camping. Thanks again, Dice Dungeons, for sponsoring this video. Links in the description below. Hello everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent. I wanted to finish talking about Zakara by focusing on some of the things that I feel make this campaign setting unique. In this case, that's magic and how magic is viewed, how it's cast, memorized, and studied. In the Land of Fate, there are sorcerers who are by far the most common spellcaster. They master two elements and primarily cast from those spell lists. The elements being flame, sand, wind, and water. The choice of these elements are usually a reflection of the sorcerer's personality, hot-tempered fire, the dedicated sand, devious water, and flighty wind. Existing alongside these sorcerers are elemental mages who devote their entire spell learning to one element, shunning all others. To these mages, there is only one right element and believe all elemental mages should follow their way. The Sha'irs are the third most common caster and are quite different. A Sha'ir is a wizard that gets their spells from genies. They don't learn spells in the usual studious fashion, but instead call upon bound genie-like creatures to bring them spells from the various planes of existence. In fifth edition, I suppose this would be more akin to a warlock than a wizard or sorcerer as you're creating some kind of pact. And if Sha'irs are ever brought to 5e, I can 100% see them taking the warlock route to define them. The Sha'irs have made packs with genie folk for power. Starting at first level, they can summon a small elemental familiar which fetches spells for them. This can include magic that other first level AD&D wizards could not cast. This elemental familiar is called a gen and becomes a permanent and willing servant of the Sha'ir. This can be in the form of any element, air, water, earth, or fire, and it becomes a sort of agent to the elemental planes. When a Sha'ir wishes to cast a spell, they send out a gen to the elemental planes to retrieve the magic desired. They return in a few rounds or a few hours, depending on the spell, with the magic and thus allows the Sha'ir to cast it. They must cast it within a few rounds or the magic is lost. The higher the spell level or the different type of magic such as divine, the longer it takes a gen to find it. I like this class. It's an interesting way to think about spellcasting in D&D. For me, it feels unique to Zakara. There are mechanics within the campaign setting to see whether your gen is successful or not in finding these spells that you're asking for. Your level, the level of the spell, is it clerical magic, and how well known the spell is are all factors in your gen being able to return with the correct one. There's a great example in Arabian Adventures Supplement. Fatima, a fifth level Sha'ir, wants to cast Burning Hands. She asks her gen to go look for it. The gen immediately disappears for 1d6 plus 1 rounds. If Fatima needs to spell immediately, she's in trouble. While away, the gen has a 50% base chance to find the spell, plus 25% for Fatima's experience level, minus 10% for the spell level, but plus 10% because the spell is considered common knowledge. In summary, the gen has a 75% chance of success. If the DM rolls 75 or less when making a percentile check, the gen returns with the spell. It's a bit complicated to be rolling for spells in the middle of combat, but AD&D 2nd Edition was a different beast from 5e. Clerical spells are tricky. They're not found in the elemental planes and must be taken from the gods. This can be done, but divine retribution can fall on the player character when they cast stolen divine magic. The elemental gen stays with your character their whole Sha'ir career. Later on, a Sha'ir might be able to summon a genie to aid in combat for a few rounds, with other options being able to offer payment to a summoned genie to perform services such as wishes or transport or protection. They can even bind genies into objects at much higher levels. The type of object that works best is a reflection of the element of the genie. Earth genies do best in bone, but any object can work effectively. Afridi are best bound into metal objects, while Jin favor materials that are light and airy, such as silk or delicate orbs of crystal. And finally, Marids are probably the most difficult to imprison, but shells, coral, and pearls work best. The first Sha'ir was a man called Jafar al-Samal, or Jafar the Incomparable. Somehow, somewhere, Jafar was able to negotiate with genies and gain the magical powers of the Sha'ir. His power over genie kind became so famous that genie lords, see my previous videos on genies, became jealous of his power. They sent armies to invade Zakara and attack Jafar. In response, he created a powerful artifact known as the Seal that subjugated all genies to the will of the Zakarans. The Seal was an urn or vase made of gold that stood three feet tall and was ornately decorated. It was completely sealed with lead. Inside of this urn were four gen, one representing each of the four elements. 
Due to the nature of the artifact, no genie could damage the urn nor harm its owner. While Jafar lived with the seal in his possession, all Zakarans had the power to summon and command genies. Attuning to this artifact would grant a non Sha'ir the power of a Sha'ir or heighten said powers if you were already a Sha'ir. Many wizards, especially the Sha'ir, coveted this relic and greatly feared anyone who possessed it. While Jafar had it, there was a new golden age of peace and prosperity in Zakara, at least as far as genies were concerned. Eventually, Jafar died and his students fought over the relic. From those students, their gen rebelled against them and stole the seal, hiding it somewhere on Tyrell. To this day, the seal is lost, but perhaps it could find a way into your campaign. There is plenty more genie lore, such as genie wizards who can summon mortals like the summon elemental spell for regular casters. Sha'irs are most commonly summoned because of their pact with genie kind. Check out my reference section in the description below for more info on Sha'irs. Thanks again for our sponsor Dice Dungeons. Be sure to check out their character coins by clicking the link in the description below. I run a weekly podcast called the Saturday Morning D&D Show, and we're trying to get the YouTube channel to a thousand subscribers. So go subscribe if you feel so inclined. We'd love to have you. Thanks again, everyone. Be sure to tell Tell me your Zakaran adventures in the comments below, and I'll see you all next week with more lore.